to the big question why is it so difficult to come by a detailed 3d comparison video on google and youtube i'm not sure if it's just me but anyways it's blender versus 3d's max without wasting any more time let's Modeling is quite bigger than you might think, so I'm going to split modeling into two and explain them separately. Organic and inorganic modeling. Both Blender and 3ds Max are awesome when it comes to raw modeling, but both do well in one and not the other. And that was the main reason I had to split the modeling into two separate categories. 3ds Max is ahead when it comes to modeling inorganic objects. 3ds Max I would say outperforms Blender 8 to 10 times in this category. Specifically for inorganic projects that involves animation, 3ds Max is the superior 3D software. Let's just ignore precise measurement and blueprint printing in this comparison because boot softwares won't be able to give you better results in that except you jump onto a CAD design software. 3ds Max has integrations for those but CAD isn't the topic for today so maybe later in short 3ds max is the optimal choice for modeling inorganic tasks if utilized to its fullest capability then we also have modeling angles sizes and positions where 3ds max tools are three times to five times faster and more accurate than blender to be more technical 3ds max uses regular flute which is 16 bits for positioning and double flute which is 32 bits for modification whereas blender employs regular fluids for transforms and only half fluid which is 8 bits for modification in simple terms 3ds max excels better than blender when it comes to inorganic modeling and that is why it's been adopted by the masses as the main software for architecture engineering and visual effects the technicalities 3ds max uses in beating blender when it comes to inorganic modeling can't be repeated when it comes to organic modeling. When it comes to organic modeling, 3ds Max is no match for Blender. Blender is known to be on top with ZBrush and 3D Code in terms of organic modeling. But unlike Blender not having a chance against 3ds Max when it comes to inorganic modeling, except when you deploy certain add-ons which comes at a cost, 3ds Max is known to have two things that makes it not too bad for organic modeling let's make it three one organic modeling in 3ds max allows you to optimize the topology manually as well as adapting the custom uvs such as its awesome relax uv2 and two 3ds max has better and faster too when it comes to merging and adapting the vertices to reduce the polygon count as well as if you want to just produce a low polygon version of a high poly from scratch but number two really doesn't count because 3ds max isn't good at creating high to low polygon textures for things like games because it still uses an old projection system that hasn't been updated properly for 10 maybe to 14 years now which is weird in this case, I would say both softwares do well with modeling, but not all types of modeling. If you want to work on inorganic models in Blender, you might need the support of other plugins or add-ons, whereas working on organic models in 3ds Max would either require you to get into ZBrush or Madbox. This was a bit challenging to explain so i'm going to give inorganic modeling to 3ds max and organic modeling to blender when it comes to uv mapping for inorganic models the choice between 3ds max and blender largely depends on the specific needs 
of the project. If precise UV placement is required due to technical reasons such as using mask or effects in Blender, I would go for 3D's Max. It's got better tools. In 3D's Max, users have greater control over UV placement because they can manually adjust individual coordinates. This is particularly useful for creating models that require precise UV placement for textures or other effects. Additionally, 3D's Max has a variety of tools for optimizing UV layouts such as the Pelt Mapping tool, which allows users to create a seamless UV layout quickly and easily. Blender on the other hand stands out as a software that offers fast performance when creating 3D models without the need for strict adherence to specific rules or techniques. This is largely due to the effectiveness of Blender's seam system and unwrap feature which allows for efficient and streamlined creation of 3D models. However, when it comes to editing UV islands, Blender may not be as well equipped as other software options. Its tools for UV unwrapping are comparatively basic and may not be able to handle more complex projects effectively. Despite this, Blender 3.2 made significant improvements in its ability to handle models with multiple materials assigned to them. In fact, working with such models in Blender is much smoother an enjoyable experience than on 3ds max 3ds max is actually accursed with black voodoo when it comes to multiple materials shared across multiple objects it's just a mess in summary blender offers impressive speed and flexibility for 3d modeling without strict technical requirements but may lack some of the advanced tools needed for precise UV unwrapping. Meanwhile, 3ds Max can struggle with certain material related issues but has powerful features for more intricate projects. I would pass this particular score to 3ds Max based on the precision, depth of tools, the reputation it's built over the years, um, accuracy and the level of depth it allows you to work on dense projects even within bigger pipelines. Blender as at now still has some small challenges with its uv but you can get other um plugins outside to support you with your uv unwrapping if blender's uv system isn't doing quite well i wouldn't want to sound biased on this one but blender sculpting to is a force to reckon with in this particular comparison. When it comes to sculpting tools, Blender outperforms 3ds Max in terms of functionality and effectiveness. The only comparable option will be Madbox, which is a paid add-on for 3ds Max. When it comes to sculpting and manipulating organic 3D models, Blender offers superior tools compared to 3ds Max and if you are on their latest version, you would attest to this. Its learning curve is a bit difficult but once you become familiar with the interface and tools you would come to agree blender is the best option when it comes to sculpting compared to 3ds max i wouldn't want to waste time speaking too much on this particular topic because blender hands down beats 3ds max when it comes to sculpting like i said when i got to 3d modeling if your main goal is to recreate buildings robots tools items or interiors 3ds max is the superior option with blender not far behind but lacking in some advanced tools on the other hand if you are focusing on character modeling involving sculpting or texture creation such as high to low polygon projection blender is the clear winner I still get quite a number of people asking me of 3ds max perpetual license you don't get any perpetual license for 3ds max no more most perpetual license holders money to use the software until somewhere 2021 into 2022 where they could still update the software and use it without no trouble the thing is those days are over if you dare update 3ds max to 2023 as a perpetual license holder you are done you would be switched from a perpetual license holder into a subscription-based license holder and then from there you would have to pay. 
if i were you i would do some research before updating if there is nothing too unique with recent updates to 3ds max don't update anyways if you are interested in knowing more about 3ds max subscription based license this is yours a subscription license is a monthly annual or multi-year subscription that gives you access to the latest version of 3ds max and its update the subscription includes technical support and cloud service number three you have educational license which has now been shrinked from three years to one year that happened i think somewhere 2020 3ds max's educational plan may be used only for purposes directly related to learning training and research they may not be used for commercial professional or any other profit purposes while the educational license is free it does not include upgrades to newer versions of 3ds max to access the latest version and updates you need to purchase a commercial or a subscription license okay let's talk about 3ds max indie version i personally feel the indie version of 3ds max and maya just had to be brought in to hold users who are switching on to blender the indie version has saved a lot of lives i won't lie to you cost 250 usd annually and is mostly targeted at recent graduates new businesses and some well-to-do freelancers note that the indie version includes the same features as the commercial version of 3ds max however it has some limitations such as single user license that's number one number two a maximum of 10 licenses per organization and the inability which is number three the inability um, for it to be used on commercial purposes that exceeds the hundred thousand usd revenue limit i just felt the need to take my time and explain well because i'm not sure i'm ever going to mention autodesk pricing again in any of my videos unless there's a huge price decrease that would be some good news i nearly forgot this was a comparison video okay so when it comes to blender it's completely free and it can be used on commercial purposes with no charges or limitations use it like you built it hey always remember to donate some cash to the blender foundation on their website just to support their good work they really deserve our money don't be greedy The quality of bricks you have and how quickly you can build a decent one are both crucial factors in animation rig. In Blender, it's possible to create a high quality bipedal rig within 6 to 12 hours, roughly. Although you may get a pre made one on the internet, they may be overly complex depending on your specific need, and that is why I always root for custom rigs since those ones can be made specifically targeting your needs. When it comes to 3D animation, Blender offers a wide range of tools that goes beyond basic keyframe animation. A typical example would be the lattice modifier, which is basically responsible for non destructive mesh deformation. Let me list out a couple of key animation tools to take notice of in Blender. Blender has the ability to import motion capture data from external softwares that is one number two is going to be the facial motion capture using markers painted onto the actor's face to enhance the realism of your 3d animation three is going to be the realistic cloth simulation dropping on your character which can be manipulated by the amateur for those looking to seamlessly integrate live action footages with computer generated imagery Blender is a free 3D animation software that has you covered because it has the ability to track camera movement. 3D's Max's animation capabilities are also really good, but to my best of knowledge, all animators on Autodesk use Maya. 3D's Max has slowly been shifted to architects and gamers. 3D's Max includes two distinct character animation tools. One is Character Studio. Are this really important okay let me just list them out since there are certain important features which contributes to 3d's max animation system being comparable to blender now character studio is specifically tailored for bipedal characters just like what you get in blender and two is going to be c80 which also breaks and animates non-humanoid characters additionally it offers 
a populate feature that enables users to set up and manage scenes with large crowd of people i think most people use 3ds max for this particular feature and there is also motion mixer a tool that takes its cue from audio editing it displays separate tracks for motion data from each body part that can be edited for speed transition loops and more look if you are so high on animating with 3ds max you should really consider spending on some commercial plugins for animation breaks in 3ds max on the other hand blender supports the entire animation workflow from start to finish modeling rigging animation simulation rendering motion tracking down to compositing i wouldn't make mention of video editing because it's kind of work to me yeah Working with keyframes and editing works really good on both softwares in my opinion, but I personally think Blender has more depth than 3ds Max when it comes to animation. In summary, if you are looking for a free and user-friendly software with a supportive community, Blender may be the better choice for you. If you need a more comprehensive and advanced tool set for professional use and are willing to invest in it, Autodesk 3ds Max may be the way to go. V-Ray is a popular rendering engine that is known for its high speed and ability to produce high quality results and it integrates seamlessly with 3ds Max. One of the advantages of using V-Ray is its speed. It uses advanced algorithms and optimizations to render scenes quickly and efficiently. This comes in handy especially for projects with tight deadlines and large datasets. Despite its speed, V-Ray is also capable of producing high quality results with realistic lighting, texturing, and materials. V-Ray and Cycles use similar methods to light a scene. The difference are in their implementation and ease of use. Cycles is Blender's best render engine at the moment, but to the big question, does it come close to V-Ray? Yes, it does, in my humble opinion. You can hardly tell in most comparisons, except when things get super complex. That's when you begin to see Cycles a bit off compared to V-Ray, but trust me, those off scenes looks better without comparing it to V-Ray. Cycles is able to pull better lighting simulation than using V-Ray. That's what I think. Cycles is slower but produces photo quality results if you know what you are really doing. Okay, if you've loved the video so far, kindly don't forget to subscribe. Now, moving on, I would... I think these are mostly what people will be looking out for when deciding on which one to choose between Blender and 3ds Max. So yeah, I don't have enough info on both softwares when it comes to games because I don't do games. I love video games but I don't really spend too much time looking into gaming and how it's done. It's not my field. I also couldn't speak on texturing. I rather spoke on UVs yeah and not texturing i would make a part two to this video to clarify certain things more based on the comments that i receive if there's anything you would want to know on both blender and 3ds max kindly feel free to leave them in the comment section below and i'll package all that and drop them in my part two of this video and maybe pair blender with maya yeah i think that's going to be fun